The first thing you need to do is work out how much air needs to be put in the tyre and the required pressure. To work this out, you first need to know what size tyre. To work out the size of the tyre, look at the side of the tyre on the tyre wall. You can see numbers there. That's the size of the tyre. So this tyre is 255 slash 35. ZR is not really important. The 19 is the next important bit. So that information is going to prove very useful in a moment. Do bear in mind, front and rear tyres can often be different sizes and require different pressure in them. So therefore, check both your front and rear tyres to see what size they are and therefore what pressure is going to be required. So, we now know what size tyres we have. We now need to know the pressures. The first way to do this is look in the owner's manual. There will be a section about tyres and then tyre pressures. And you need to look for a table similar to this with lots of numbers in. So remember, my tyre was 255-35-R19. There it is. Now, there's still quite a few numbers, aren't there? Firstly, we need to work out how many people are normally in our car. The first list of numbers are for up to three occupants and one luggage item. The next one is maximum gross vehicle weight. That's if on a very regular basis your car has maybe four or five people in and always has lots of baggage. Or maybe even you're towing something. Generally for most people this isn't too common. So for most people they would go for the lower figures of up to maybe three occupants in the car. Now there are still a few figures here. The first line is for front pressures. The first number is a pressure in a unit called bar. The second is a unit called PSI. And the third is in a unit called KPA. Now in the UK we mainly use the unit of pressure of PSI, pounds per square inch. So for my front tyres, that's going to be 37 PSI. For my rear tyres, that's going to also be 37 PSI. You can also often find the table of tyre pressures inside the door, perhaps the driver's door or the passenger's door, depending on which car you're driving. Or even better, to save all this faff of looking through tables, some modern cars will have the tyre pressures inside the onboard computer. You can even then often use the onboard computer to check the tyre pressures for you. It's as simple as that. If you haven't got a fancy car that can check the pressures itself, you'll need the machine like this. Take this part and find the valve cap on the tyre. Just there. Unscrew it. Lefty loosey, remember. Righty tighty. And then take the other thing and screw that on. Righty tighty. Initially, some air will come out as you're tightening it. But don't worry. Keep tightening it until the air stops coming out and the air goes through the pipe. You're not going to lose much air if a little air comes out while you're doing this. It's quite normal. Nothing to worry about. Now it's on tight, look at the machine and see what reading we've got. It looks like it's just below 40 psi, which is exactly what we wanted, perfect. And now, you can unscrew it, lefty loosey. Again, if air comes out while you're doing this, don't panic, it's really minimal air that's coming out. Just keep unscrewing it until it stops, air stops coming out. And then, take the valve cap and tighten that on. Make sure it's on nice and tight so you don't risk losing it. Now we can also use a tool like this to check the pressures. With the valve cap already removed, take this part of the pressure gauge and that needs to go onto the valve. Just like this. Push it hard until its air stops coming out and then it should give you a reading. Just had to get the camera to focus and according to this it is where is it? There it is 36. This is saying 36 psi. So again about right. Take the valve cap and screw that back on tight. Take this part of the machine 
and that's going to go into the 12 volt socket inside your car. So off we go into the car. So my 12 volt socket is just in here. There it is. So I'm going to pop that in there. And the orange lights come on, so it means power is going to it. Bear in mind on some cars, you'll need to turn the engine on fully to get power going to the 12 volt socket. And therefore, to power your pump. Now that's got power on it, I will turn it on with this button here. And off it goes. It's quite loud, and will vibrate quite a bit, so make sure it's nice and steady. about right, just below 40. So you can now turn it off and then unscrew it from the valve. Find the valve cap, wherever that is, where's it gone? Here it is. And then screw that on nice and tight. You can then unplug the pump from the 12 volt slot and you're done with this tyre. You should notice on the valve there's a small pin right in the centre. What you need to be able to do is press that and that will release air from the tyre. I typically like to use something like a screwdriver or in this case the end of this tread depth gauge. So take it and carefully press the pin, press and hold, and the air will start to come out. Obviously the longer you hold it, the more air will come out. So if a tyre is only maybe 5 psi over, you won't need to let much air out at all. If it's only 1 or 2 psi over, I wouldn't even worry about it and just leave it. You can then attach your pressure gauge and see if the pressures are back to normal. Just a quick extra bit to mention the importance of making sure your tyres are correctly inflated. This picture shows quite well the effect of under and over inflated tyres. It can cause basically uneven wear to the tyres. It can also affect your fuel consumption. Ideally you want to check your tyre pressures once a week. This is because you could have got a nail in your tyre on any point, you wouldn't know when it went in there and then you could get a slow puncture, which is where air slowly comes out of the tyre and the tyre eventually goes flat. And you obviously don't want the tyre to go flat when you're in the middle of the countryside or on a motorway, which is why it is again strongly recommended you check your tyres before you go for any long journeys to reduce the chance of breaking down in an area you don't know far away from home. Of course, if you've got quite a modern car, and it's quite a good spec, quite a good model, it might have tyre pressure monitoring system on it, or TPMS. That's why I showed you earlier in this video. If your car does have that, it's brilliant, as you don't need to be spending all this time checking your tyre pressures. The system will tell you if the tyre pressures get too low.